What's up guys, Justin here with thecgessentials.com. So you might have seen Blender 4.2 has now been released. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so first off you can download Blender 4.2 by visiting blender.org and clicking on the download button right here. That's gonna get you the 4.2 LTS version of Blender. Um, and so you can download it using this link and then you can see their detailed blog post talking about what's contained inside of this new version by clicking on the what's new button on the right hand side right here. Now this is a very exciting new version because they've incorporated something that we've been waiting on for a while, which is the upgraded version of Eevee. There's a ton of other things that were added in here as well, one that I'm really interested in because I use a lot of Blender extensions, um, but let's go ahead and let's go through some of these new features. So. Um, there's a video recap as well as a showcase reel showing what you can do with this, but the big thing right now is that Eevee Next is here and it's built into Blender. You don't have to like select any special settings or anything like that in order to enable it. All right, so right here, what they're saying is that Eevee can automatically extract lights from the world environment and treat them as sunlights. Basically what this means is this means that this has um, ray trace global illumination that is going to add things like shadows in your scene automatically with things like HDRI images. So if we hop over into Blender right here, now I'm gonna hop over into a fresh version of this, uh, of this classroom scene, but say we're gonna go through and toggle off all the lights. Okay, so right now I've turned off all of the lights, but say that I was to bring in an HDRI image. So we'll go ahead and we'll pick one up. I think I just have one from like a Materialic, doesn't really matter. Let's pick something with a lower sun and drag it in here. So when you first do this, it doesn't look like it's any different right? Um, so what we need to do is we need to toggle on ray tracing. We also want to jump into our environment settings. And if you scroll down into the settings, there's an option for shadow. And so when you have the option for shadow, what this is going to do is this is going to cast shadows in your scene using the HDRI image. So if I rotate this, notice how this is now casting that light into your scene using the HDRI. So it's like real time illumination inside of your scene. Notice if you toggle that ray tracing off, you're gonna get a different look. You are still getting some shadows in here, but the ray tracing is gonna make it much more realistic. All right, so this is a feature I'm really excited about, which is the real displacement in Eevee. So now you can do displacement within Eevee itself. Now, one thing to note about this, um, and we'll go ahead and we'll start fresh again. So I'm just going to do a new scene right here. We'll add a mesh, we'll add a material, which has a displacement map. So maybe something like this pavement right here. But now if you select this and hop into your material settings right here, scroll down to displacement, and you make sure that you've toggled that displacement and bump on. And again, we're in rendered mode using Eevee. But now if I adjust this, notice how it's doing displacement. Now, one thing about this is the subdivision surface modifier using the um, using the method that we've used before, which is using adaptive subdivision does not work inside of Eevee. So what needs to happen is you need to make sure that you're adding this to a mesh that has a bunch of geometric detail in here. So usually what I'll do is I'll just subdivide this until it's got more detail, but then I'll toggle up the subdivision a little bit more right here. But now you can see how if I bring this down like this, go ahead and toggle out of edit mode, we're able to actually do this real time displacement inside of Eevee. And if you were to adjust things like your light, and I'm gonna bump up the power of my light Notice how things like shadows will be reflected in those displaced meshes. So being able to do that displacement within Eevee is a game changer to me. I think that one is super exciting. All right, we've also got some improvements to some other lighting types inside of Eevee. So the subsurface scattering is now not going to leak between different objects, um, as well as some improved volumetrics for your scenes as well. Um, I don't use a ton of this kind of stuff, um, but if you do these kind of rendering things, I mean, just looking at the difference between this one and this one, it's a massive improvement. 
And so you've also got real-time motion blur inside of the 3D viewport as well. There's a ton of things about this upgraded version of Eevee. We've not even scratched the surface of this, but suffice it to say, it's a really exciting new release. Now there are some notes about limitations um, that you may want to take a look at. So things that it's going to tell you what EV can and can't do, right? Like a certain number of attributes from geometry nodes. Um, there's only so many active light probe spheres, things like that, um, that you may want to read through, but still very exciting. And so there's also some improvements in cycles. So for example, you got things like the Ray Porter, BS, Ray Portal BSDF. That's basically going to allow you to um, create a portal for light rays, meaning that you can um, basically transport light rays from one area to another. So if you do wanna create like a camera feed or something like that of an area, you could basically use this to set up a camera that's looking into the area, create a portal, which then shows up on this TV screen right here, um, which which is super interesting to me. So you've also got some effects like thin film interference, which again, I will probably never use, um, but if you do create images like this, um, could definitely be super valuable. So they've also reduced the amount of noise you're going to see when rendering different volumes, as well as adding some additional sampling for trying to help you get a better result when it comes to your denoising. Okay, so this next feature is super interesting to me. It's the extensions. So instead of add-ons, we now have extensions inside of Blender. So this is basically set up where you can either drag and drop or access these libraries of extensions from directly inside of Blender. So if you go to like extensions.blender.org, for example, there's a number of different Blender extensions on this page. Now, these are all going to be free as far as I know. I don't think anything on the Blender extensions page will ever be paid. And so basically the way this works is if you hop into Blender, right, we can go in here, that's fine. We'll go to edit preferences. You can go to get extensions right here. And this is going to allow you to access different repositories of extensions. Um, so at the moment, there's only the extensions.blender.org. Um, I think that you can access other repositories. I'm not sure if there's any out there yet. I'm going to have to look into that a little bit more. But basically the way this works is you can either work online or offline. So if I click on allow online access. That's going to basically give me the ability to access that online repository. And then anything that I want to install from that repository. So say I wanted to add this uh, molecular nodes, or let's go with maze generator. You just click on install right here, and that's just going to download that and install it directly inside of Blender. So now if I scroll up, notice how maze generator is up here, right here. It's installed and ready to use. And so you can see how this added this add-on right here, or extension that's going to generate a maze. So you can adjust things like number of rows, number of columns, in order to generate a maze inside Blender. So um, not about that one particular add-on, but about the fact that you can access all of these directly in Blender. Now you do also have the regular add-ons in here, Notice if you click on the drop down right here for install from disk, that's going to let you go find um, your add on. So if you download something from the Blender market, something like that, um, you can do that using the install from disk that's in here. So you do have options for both extensions and add-ons still. I've not heard any talk of like the Blender market going to extensions. Um, I suppose it's a possibility, but I've not seen anything, um, but kind of stay tuned for what's going to be happening in the future. So the other benefit of that is that does mean that for the, uh, the extensions that are linked back to a repository, there's gonna be a button in there to update them. So if you need to update to a newer version, this gives you the ability to do that. Now, if you do want more information about the extensions, so say for example, that we wanted to install this molecular nodes right here, you can click on the get add-on button from the extensions.blender.org page and you can actually just drag and drop this directly inside of Blender and it's going to install it as soon as you click on OK. So it'll download that tool and install it, which depending on the size might take a minute. But now that extension is installed and ready to go. 
All right, so they've also included the Kronos PBR Tone Mapper, um, which is basically a tone mapper that's designed to try to display like true to life color, hue and saturation inside your model. Again, not really something that I'm gonna use a ton, but you can see how using that tone mapper does give you a different result in here. So um, if you are doing tone mapping, you can definitely use this. We've also got a number of different tools for the sculpt functions. So um, you can use this in order to create polygonal shapes, um, as well as a number of other things like trimming lines, um, hiding things, other things like that. So a number of improvements to the sculpt features inside of Blender. And so there are definitely improvements to geometry nodes. So there's a new like socket type um, inside of Blender that allows you to work with matrices. Um, so I think we're gonna find some really interesting things coming from developers having to do with uh, the matrix socket nodes. You can see how these have like a new matrix function in here, which is really interesting. So the one that I'm finding really interesting though is this node tool that is a wait for click. All right, so the way this works is within this tool, and you can download it from the link on that page, but if you activate the impact fracture tool, it's using that wait for click. What it's gonna do is when I come in here and I click, it's going to run the tool on something that I click on. So if I come in here and do it again, you know, import fracture, fracture tool, what it's doing is it's running based on where I click. Now I can think of a ton of places where that could get really interesting inside of Blender. So I'm really excited to see what devs are gonna be able to do with that um, because that is a really interesting way of making something happen inside of Blender. So there have also been some improvements in the video sequencer um, down below. So if you use this to like edit or create videos, other things like that, um, there's definitely tools in here for this. Um, there's also some interesting text improvements allowing you to add text, but then also do things like doing a shadow offset, angle, blur size, that kind of thing. And so there's also a number of different things having to do with exporting out of Blender as well. All right, so overall, huge new release, um, especially with the new version of Eevee. This is a massive release that I'm interested in getting into in the future. But leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about it so far. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.